good evening friends uh, today i am reminding you of uh, reverend moon while i am here and uh, we have been hearing from uh, mr kem about this tunnel uh, it was in 1998 uh, that uh, myself uh, uh, ted turner reverend moon and coffee onan at that time he was heading the un uh, got together uh, ted turner had just started uh, his operation of cnn he was trying to connect uh, the houses uh, with the help of uh, a, a channel which could be seen worldwide uh, reverend moon uh, had this great dream which he presented of bringing the whole world connected through this uh, system of uh, highway which can be done uh, underground through the help of the tunnels while i was involved in connecting the world through the gsm system of mobile telephony where the whole world can speak to each other with the help of a mobile phone uh, when we met uh, uh, when all of us met kofi annan he at that time was very disturbed that uh, united nation has not been able to do much uh, there have been more than 30 million deaths in war after the Uh, after the second world war in various wars uh, which took place after un was formed he was also very disturbed that uh, uh, this uh, most of this war were of religious nature and he felt that uh, as the new millennium is coming why don't you all get together and bring the spiritual leaders of the world together in united nation uh, i was we all three were involved in that we created a millennium summit of spiritual and religious leaders of the world as was said i was in india at that time and uh, india was uh, the largest delegation we brought nearly 500 people from india in this uh, uh, big gathering which happened in united nation in year 2000 uh, the gathering was of nearly 2000 people in this great gathering in united nation it was felt that uh, uh, the political leaders uh, do not have either the vision or the will to uh, and the power to create this one world and uh, whether the spiritual leaders can play a role i think lot has happened after that we are sitting in 2014 and uh, still uh, there is a feeling that uh, the political leaders neither has the will nor the power to create this one world now naturally it has been a dream of all of us uh, towards that uh, that's why i was very keen to reconnect with upf uh, with uh, dr welsh uh, when we met and uh, in the meantime i had started uh, this body called global citizen forum but we also found that uh, there are many many bodies uh, which have been formed in the last uh, 15 years including uh, there is a body by google Uh, which is known as forward there's a body by facebook which is called as network uh, uh, so there are many many ngos which have been for made by many many corporations worldwide with one desire how to create one world how to create a peaceful world and how to create a world where the whole humanity can live as one uh, whether this is a dream or is something a reality i think uh, the desire is there the dream is uh, common it is no longer a dream of particular type of people or particular countries it's a global dream but as we have been hearing these speakers before us and many many speakers who speak in various conferences that it's not happening the one hope which happened after the united nation was created is the creation of europe the experiment of europe Uh, where the two world wars were fought has been an uh, exemplary uh, you know example but this they did by themselves it was naturally supported uh, by or not uh, supported i won't use the word but uh, uh, people sympathized with this but it was uh, something which was started by bringing east and west germany together it was something which was started by creating one currency it was started by creating one assembly for these peoples where the political uh, decision could be taken for europe and i think this europe creation has created a hope that more and more of this economic 
formats can be created before we create one world. And uh, one world is a big uh, game because you are talking of so many nations. So if before we create one world, can we create regions which are one? Because most of the conflict is in the regions. America has also moved in creating one America by bringing our North and South America, Canada together in one economic format. Uh, we at Asia Pacific has not done much on it. I think Asia Pacific region has been highly fragmented. It is a region which was always having uh, been uh, colonized in the past. It is a region which has not uh, you know, being united. Somebody uh, recently in one of the speech just mentioned uh, the great uh, prophet Muhammad and Buddha. These uh, two prophets of uh, prophet and uh, Buddha, for, they both uh, projected peace in the world and they were the one who were trying to bring this peace in this uh, region. I think Buddha who came from India uh, was a, a messenger of peace. He talked about uh, equality. He talked about peace uh, in the not only in the in the in the region, but he, this Buddhism spread from uh, uh, China, Japan, Korea, and most of the Asian countries. Even uh, Islam, which started uh, in in the uh, Middle East, got spread in most of these countries, including India including Singapore. Today, uh, Singapore, which the country I belong, has become a symbol of uh, peace. Uh, I took the citizenship of Singapore in uh, 2002 for that region. Uh, I feel that Singapore has the technology for peace. It is one country uh, which has uh, tried to make bridges with every nation of the world. And uh, uh, I think in Asia Pacific, the role of Singapore as a peacemaker should not be uh, you know, forgotten uh, or should not be missed. Uh, we are talking three major forces which are, which are going to play a role in uh, restructuring of Asia Pacific. Certainly Japan, we have just uh, heard uh, the role of Japan which is extremely important. Uh, Japan has been an uh, aggressor in the uh, uh, Second World War and that's why uh, their responsibility is higher. Uh, uh, this region has suffered because of Japan. This region has been, uh, you know, uh, in a way, uh, have a lot to, uh, you know, ask from Japan. And uh, I think uh, uh, as Germany has to play a bigger role and has to give up a bigger leadership or, or a bigger statesmanship to bring Europe together, that Japan has to uh, become a bigger statesman to do that. I think Japan is not something who can ask what other nations can do. Japan should say what they can do for other nations. Japan has been like Germany has been in the past, uh, has uh, been the aggressor. They have not only conquered at that time or colonized at that time, uh, the, uh, you know, most of the nations uh, in this area, including uh, uh, China and Korea. So I think that's uh, one thing which is common between Germany, uh, between Europe and Asia, that there they have Germany, we have Japan here. On the other side, uh, we have uh, the role of China, which is uh, one of the uh, people who have the veto power, because in this whole region, there's only one uh, country which has the veto. And they should use this veto judicially. They cannot be a party to the vetoes which are being used by Russia or by US or by uh, France or by UK. I think we expect more from China to play a game where this veto is more for Asia. It is not for the people of other parts of the world. And that's why when my friend talk about Russia-China relationship, that's fine, it is very welcome, but it is not at the expense of Asia. I think China veto is something which should be the veto for Asia. India naturally has a third role to play. India is a very historical country. It is a country which has always talked of peace. It is known as a nation for peace. It has a, it has a history of peace. It is one nation which has no aggression history in the world. Even when India, uh, when Bangladesh was liberated from Pakistan by India, uh, India got out of the Bangladesh within a period of 
less than a month. That means they did not keep the control like people did in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places by keeping their army. So I think India has a tremendous history of peace. So we have these three great nations, India, China, and Japan, which should play their role in doing that. But uh, again, it's not only the government who does it, it is the NGOs. And that's why uh, we, uh, as uh, GCF, are working with UPF and many, many uh, other organizations to bring this change where Asia can work as one country as what Europe is doing. So that's my thought uh, for today evening. Uh, I fondly remember Reverend Moon. Uh, we had a lot of uh, discussions together. I have seen this project of his with the tunnel, and when it was first presented to me, I was fascinated. I was fascinated with the dream he had. I was fascinated by the vision he had, and I was fascinated by seeing that this great visionary has this, uh, you know, uh, a vision to unite the world by road. We have been talking of uniting the road by air and by TVs, and this person came up with the idea of physically connecting the world. And for that, I salute him, and I feel very honored to be here, present with you uh, in this program, which is organized in his memory, and I must uh, 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 give my respect to Mrs. Moon and also to all the people who are working in this organization and the great work they are doing. Thank you very much.